In this video, I'm gonna show you the new G1000 and how to download it. And then I'm gonna show you how to use the autopilot. The autopilot in the old version, uh, unfortunately wasn't working quite correctly, in particular the flight level change. So uh, I'll show you how to download that, how to use the autopilot. But before we get started, I'm gonna have a shameless plug for Keyboard Flight Academy. If you've always wanted to learn to fly, but you're not ready to spend the tens of thousands of dollars it costs to get the training, then Keyboard Flight Academy is for you. Our mission is to be the premier virtual flight training program. You can dip your toes into aviation and see if it's something that you enjoy. We teach our lessons according to the Airman Certification Standards. Though we do post to YouTube, our premium content is in the link below. So the first thing you want to do is download the new G1000. This is really exciting because the old G1000's autopilot kind of was a little messed up and uh, a few of the items didn't work correctly. So come over to the marketplace, full catalog, and you will click on category. You're going to click on avionics and it's really the only one that they have right now. It's the G1000. Uh, I do have it download, downloaded, so it says owned here, but it would usually say get and download and it is absolutely free. So go ahead and do that. And now I'll go ahead and show you how to use the autopilot. I did this in one stream without editing it. So I know it's a little um, rough around the edges, but uh, I may make a full tutorial that is well edited later on. Let me know if you have questions. All right, so here we are in the new G1000. The old version's autopilot did not work very well. This one, as far as I can tell, is accurate and works correctly. So that's really exciting. So this is a quick and dirty tutorial. I'm going to go through this very quick. It's not a in-depth one, but if you do have questions, pop it in the comments below and I'll answer those questions for you. All right, right up here is the modes that you are currently in. The left side is the lateral axis, so left and right movement. The middle is the mode, whether it's an autopilot or flight director or neither. And then over here is the vertical axis, which is up and down. Up and down, not down, duh. All right, so right in the middle here, autopilot or flight director. This is the area that you find all your autopilot buttons. You can also see it right over here. So uh, just because in real life, uh, you're usually using your left hand to fly, I usually use this one over here because my right hand is available. So that's why I'm coming to this one. Now, uh, autopilot and flight director, the difference between that you can see right here, this is the airplane's actual attitude. It's is the yellow uh, little diamond. And uh, these are kind of representative of the wings. You can see the white marks. That's the um, horizon, five degrees up, 10 degrees up, five degrees down and more. And then up here, you can also see that you have your banking angle. You have 10, 20, 30, 45, 60, and same on the other side. Um, Anyways, the difference between autopilot and flight director is that um, the autopilot actually puts you into the flight director without you having to have any input. This magenta diamond is the flight director, and it's more or less telling you this is what you have to do to achieve this. Right now we're in heading mode, and this is a 131 uh, heading bug. So it's saying, okay, we need to fly the 131 if there's a strong wind or, or say we need to turn left, we're going to this heading. You can see the purple starts turning and that's our flight director. Now you can see the yellow is also turning. That's because autopilot is on. So the aircraft automatically follows the flight director. But watch what happens if we turn autopilot off. Okay, autopilot is off and the flight director is on. And usually there should be an FD right here, which uh, unfortunately isn't showing. That's interesting. Um, now let me hit heading so that we're back on that mode and vertical speed nose down so that we hit our altitude. Now you can see the flight director saying this is the attitude you need to be in in order to follow that. But since we're not in autopilot, our aircraft is going wherever I want. Now I'm touching the controls and I'm doing whatever I want, but the flight director is like, no, this is how it should be. So when you're flying without autopilot, but you do have flight director on, 
you just want to match this yellow part up with the magenta and eventually you'll get to the point where you're flying at this heading and this altitude or whatever you have programmed into the uh, flight director slash autopilot okay so here we are I'm flying this we are on our heading we're at our altitude and if I turn this to the left you can see the flight director is going to start moving I need to start moving with it in order to achieve this new heading and we are all set now the flight director will continue to stay on and the flight director has to be on in order in order for autopilot to be on so I'll hit autopilot now now we are in autopilot I no longer have to do anything and the aircraft will follow the flight director magenta triangle so we can go ahead and turn left and it's going to automatically do it and you can see flight director is a lot better at following or autopilot's a lot better at following flight director than I am so there's that okay so autopilot the aircraft is being controlled by the autopilot flight director the magenta line is there and you can follow it uh, manually so those are the two modes that are there now we have our lateral access and we have the heading mode and the nav mode and we also have the approach mode which I'm not going to talk about I'll give you a description of what it is but I'm not going to show you in person so the heading mode is exactly that it's going to follow the heading bug and you can see this blue um, little bug is what it's called is the heading bug if it is in the heading mode wherever I put this bug the aircraft will fly to you can see right here this blue we're going to 297 if I do it the other way 340 and as long as we're in heading mode the flight director is going to show the autopilot how to get there because we're in autopilot mode it's going to do it automatically perfect uh, the next one is nav mode and that means whatever you have right here in your CDI is uh, what it is going to follow so currently we're on uh, our nav 2 um, so we have nav 1 nav 2 as you can see right up here uh, nothing is entered into it and we have our GPS which I guess we have something set into it I'm just gonna go ahead and set something of my own nearest direct to activate okay so we're going direct to that airport KDGW now you can see we're in heading mode right now it's wanting us to turn in that direction to go to that airport but since we're in heading mode we're going to keep on going at the 340 uh, heading but if I hit nav and we're in GPS it's going to start following this now you can see it doesn't say nav up here it says GPS that's because that's the type of nav that we're doing if I hit the CDI button um, now we are in VOR is what it would say but once we go to GPS hit nav it's going to say GPS since I don't have any VORs put in it doesn't say VOR but that's what it would show right up there and so those are the two main lateral um, autopilot aspects heading mode and nav mode now the next is the uh, vertical ones and the main vertical ones that we're going to worry about are the vertical speed and the flight level change now they both do the same thing they're going to well they don't do the same thing but they do make us go up or down that's the purpose of those curious uh, how this is working out it doesn't look like it's working quite right but we'll go ahead and uh, keep on following this okay so vertical speed is quite literally it's going to bug on the vertical speed indicator and what the vertical speed indicator tells us is how fast we're going up or down if we're at a hundred feet per minute that means in 100 feet uh, we will rise 100 feet in one minute if we're negative 200 feet per minute then we're going to fall 200 feet in one minute so that's how um, this one works now first you actually have to set a uh, bug for the altitude so I'll go ahead and do that it can't be if we're gonna go down you have to put the bug below us if you're going to go up 
you're going to have to put the bug above us. That's a common mistake. Sometimes you'll be at, you'll set the bug for 3,500 and you'll tell it to fly up. The aircraft is going to get confused because they're trying to say, what are we flying up to? I don't understand. There's no bug above us. So it will malfunction and it'll be a little bit difficult. I'll go ahead and show you. I don't know what it's going to do. It's going to start climbing, but it will climb forever and it won't actually hit the bug that we want. So let's actually go down. I'm going to go down. You can see right over here, this is the bug. We're at 100 feet per minute right now. We want to go negative. So let's do negative 600 feet. Negative 500 is a pretty common one. Uh, you want to be somewhere around there. Uh, although you can do whatever you like. In real life, you do uh, 500 feet per minute in a general aviation uh, aircraft is a, a pretty common average. Okay, so let me bring this up to 6,500 and we're just gonna keep on falling until we hit the 6,500. I'm gonna bring it up to 7,000 because I don't wanna wait. 7,000, I'm curious what this nav is doing. It's finally catching up to it and following it correctly. Unfortunately, that's not exactly how it would work. Um, I was really confused by that in a real uh, G1000. It wouldn't look quite exactly like that, but it looks like it's doing the, the effect that it needs. Okay, so here we are coming down to 700. So that's the feet per minute aspect. Now, one reason uh, vertical speed can be bad is you can actually stall out. If you put it too high and your airspeed is low, you'll stall and you'll fall out of the sky. So I'm gonna be exaggerating uh, this motion, but I'm gonna go ahead and go up to, I'm just gonna do 11,000 and I'm gonna do vertical speed and I'm just gonna go nose up to like 2,000 feet per minute, 2,100. Watch our airspeed is gonna keep going, keep going. Eventually we're gonna stall because it can't achieve 2,000 feet per minute for very long. In a real aircraft, it wouldn't even get this close to actually doing it. So here we come, here comes the stall. We're not able to hold it. Flight director saying, way up, way up. Our aircraft saying, we can't do that. And eventually you stall. So that's one reason vertical speed can be dangerous. Uh, if you have a vertical speed that your aircraft can't handle, then it's never gonna get there. And in real life, you'd stall and fall out of the sky more or less. So um, vertical speed does have that particular issue. Now, flight level change kind of fix, fixes that because usually you fly at say VY, which is a climbing attitude. And uh, for this aircraft, I can't remember what it is. I think it's probably right around 70. Uh, so we can go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to 9,000. And we're going to do flight level change and you can see it goes according to airspeed. Now I'm gonna go nose up. So 75 we'll say is the airspeed we wanna go for. And now it's going to work towards achieving this 75 knots. Instead of going a certain feet per minute, it's just gonna fly 75 knots, uh, which is an attitude that would uh, bring us up. And you can see this is rising. And with this, you wouldn't stall out. You would stay at a good airspeed. So that's a great reason to use flight level change. Personally, how I usually do it is when I'm flying up, I use flight level change and I set an airspeed. When I'm going down, I set a vertical speed pointing down. Now, autopilot with the G1000 does not control throttle, so that's something you have to think about. If you're doing a vertical speed down and it's like 2,000 feet per minute, uh, you may go into the red arc, which would be bad. Um, in a sim, I guess you could kind of get away with it if you have damages turned off, but it's not what you want to do. So let me go ahead and show you what that would look like. So. 3,000, I'm gonna do vertical speed, nose down. And we're gonna hit this red arc, which would not be a good thing. We might actually hit the altitude before we hit the red arc, who knows?
So here we are, we're in the warning area, which is yellow, not a great thing. And coming up to the red. Now what you can do to fix this is you can pull the power back. And you'll continue to fall at this pace, uh, but it wouldn't be so fast, uh, airspeed wise, which would be better on the aircraft. And I think we're actually going to hit the ground before we hit 3,000, so I'll bring it up to 5,000. Ah, we're going to die. So there we go. But now I pulled the throttle out, so you have to remember that. If we get to 5,500 right there, and I don't do anything about it, now it's going to start pitching up. But since I have no power, we're going to lose a lot of airspeed. And you can see we're still falling through. It should have caught the 5,500. And not a good situation manually pull up trying to meet this and you can see we're about to stall so add that power so that's another thing to remember autopilot does not control your throttle at least for the G1000 general aviation uh, airplanes that's pretty much all I wanted to show you I'll tell you what the other buttons do but I'm not going to show you how to do them um, that may be another video. The approach mode will actually follow the ILS. So if you're coming on, on an ILS, it will follow the glide slope and uh, your lateral and vertical um, requirements. Let me turn autopilot off. Yeah, there we go. So if you're coming in on the ILS, you could do approach mode. And really, you wouldn't even have to touch the controls until it's time to land, which is very, very convenient. Um, on the other hand, you have to remember about power. So if you come in, you need to adjust the power manually, but you wouldn't have to adjust the yoke or the stick. So that is the approach mode. Back course, um, that's for a back course. If you understand uh, ILS, sometimes there's a back, back course. You would hit back course for that one. Uh, VNAV isn't something that I've personally used, so I can't speak too much about that. Uh, that's probably the not, the one that I don't understand. From my guess is that that's for a GPS approach of some sort. Uh, then you'd use vertical nav instead of approach mode. Uh, not too sure on that. If you want to put a comment in the comment section below, uh, if you do know what that actually does, uh, do that. I would love for people to know what that is. So that's really all it is. Nose up. Uh, that's how you control uh, either the vertical speed up or down, which you saw me using, or the airspeed up or down. All right, that's pretty much it. I know this was quick and dirty and not very um, organized and, and chopped up in a video format, but I just kind of wanted to do a quick version for you. Thanks for joining us for this video. Like we said before, we do post to YouTube, but our premium content is found in the link below.